What is going on, guys? Your boy Trent back with video, and today I have a very special guest on the channel, Ole Miss linebacker Troy Brown. Troy, welcome into the channel, and I appreciate you doing this, man. Ah, uh, man, thanks for having me, bro. Uh, I really appreciate you reaching out, and you know, what I mean, getting me on your show. Uh, I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready to get to it. Let's get it. Okay, okay. So tell the people uh, where you're from, played high school at. Uh, of course, you play linebacker. Uh, just share what are you going to share with the people. Uh, well, I would like for everybody to know uh, that my journey was a little different from everybody's. Um, in high school, I actually, uh, I was a defensive back, so I was a smart guy coming out of high school. Um, I was recruited to, you know, to play receiver and to play, I mean, uh, DB. So, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, linebacker was never in my vision. So, um, once I kind of transitioned over or once I started to gain weight, it was just kind of, I mean, natural to to do that. But uh, I'm from Flint, Michigan. Uh, it's a hard place to live. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, it's um, the place where they had uh, c contaminated water. Um, okay. But uh, it's it's I mean, making milestones. It's way better than what it used to be when the uh, crisis hit and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'm just I'm always uh, proud to say that uh, that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Flint storm. I'm a guy from Flint from that little uh from that little place in, in Michigan. So yeah, um, I'm from Flint, Michigan, and I played at uh, Carmen Ainsworth. Carmen Ainsworth High. Okay. Okay. Now, when did you start playing football? Oh, uh, really? Um, back to when I could first remember. Um, I remember the first time me getting an injury from football is me playing with uh, my older brother and my older cousins in the living room, man. We're just being boys and being rough, and he tackled me. And it hit my head on the furnace, and like just blood just got to going out everywhere. My mom just went crazy and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, football has just kind of always been there. And I mean, having an older brother and having older siblings, it, it, it obviously it, it took off. So, yeah, competition too, probably. And definitely, probably I hated some, losing. I'm guessing some fights too, probably. Man, he would never let me lose. Uh, he would, I mean, he would never let me win. And then even when he didn't let me win. He will always give me crap about losing, so I will be. I, I became a real sore loser. Okay, I got you. Uh, okay, so what did you realize? Like, hey, there's a chance, possibility, I could play Division One football. Uh, well, I I've been training to to be a pro uh, actually since I was like 13 or 14 years old. Maybe it was in a different sport. At first I was playing basketball. I would wake up okay uh, before school probably like four or five five o'clock and go lift weights and, and shoot the ball and work out before middle school and then even after middle school I would I would go to practice with my coach and the coach that I uh who was my middle school coach. He was also my mentor and my AU coach and a guy that I lived with uh for a period of time. So um, for a while, I was I was living a life of, I mean, being trained to to be a professional or to to chase this type of lifestyle. But um, in the beginning, it wasn't for football at all. I was I was a basketball player, but I always played football. That was the first sport I ever played. That was the first love. It's just that um, once my brother uh, moved away, it was just the football piece kind of left with him, and I was just stuck with just me. And all my friends like to play basketball, so basketball kind of took it, took its, uh, took on its own life. But I knew I could play D one when, you know, I, I flashed as a freshman. Um, I was I, I was playing varsity and I was just making plays and and being fearless. And I always just thought like, even though I was a smaller guy or I was a younger guy, that I could play with anybody that's that's on the field. So that's how my mindset was, but. Obviously, being in the area that I was in and being at the school that I was at, I didn't get recruited at all, uh, probably for like the first two, two and a half years. So um, it was it was kind of hard, but I always had that mindset to where I could I could do anything that I wanted to put my mind to. Oh, yes. Hey, that's the mindset you got to have. And definitely. OK, so. Uh... Who who was your first offer? Just kind of wondering. Who was my first offer? It was Central Michigan University. First oh, offer at all. Too, and my so. first my first div division one offer. Um I got it going into my senior year. Um, which was kind of 
it was relaxing for me because it was like, okay, I got this out of the way. Um, yeah, going to finish, ones, yeah, yeah, going to finish my last year. Hopefully, I can get more and more and and build yeah. on top of that. But um, as as the season went on, um, I didn't really stay healthy. Uh, that's that's a, obviously been a problem with me um, for some time. But I didn't stay healthy my senior year, and they they were the ones who were always there, like consistently, not just peeking in here and there or giving me a text uh, once every two to three months. You know, the, the recruiters, the guys who wanted me, the, some of the players, they reached out and they, I mean, they they really brought me in before I could even make my decision to go there. So yeah. I already knew those guys before I even decided that I was going there. So for you, it was kind of a pretty clear choice, kind of obvious is where you're going to. Definitely, definitely, because it was like these guys took their, took. I mean, took a shot at me. To uh, they they bet their money on me. They was the first one to do it. So, I mean, I was I was glad to do the same for them. Yeah, and I guess you want to stay kind of close to home too, probably. Definitely. Uh, I mean the the decision to stay close to home came into effect when I found out I was having my daughter. So I was um uh, before I had left actually uh, in June is when I found out I was having uh, my firstborn. Okay. Hey, congratulations on that. Thank you, man. She's okay, so um, four now, and she's she's big and crazy, man. <laughs> hey, going up quick, man, real quick. Hey, before you know it, she's gonna be a teenager in college. Before you know it, so. <laughs> I dread today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, now correct me if I'm wrong, but was Jim McElwain there when you went to? <laughs> okay, he was. Did that have some kind of impact on it as well? Because McElwain was at Florida, was an SEC. I mean, oh, did that okay. have some um, kind of impact on it as well, too? Yeah, let me clear. Okay. He wasn't he wasn't there when when I was being recruited, but he came my second year. Okay, okay. Okay, so I had my I had my freshman year. I wasn't too sure about that. And he got, yeah, and he got um the um, head coach that got fired, and then I had got uh, McElwain. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about Central Michigan. So you came to Central Michigan and had a very good career. Read a couple of stats right quick. Uh, see, first team All Mac the last three years, uh, team captain, team MVP, uh, career stats 203 tackles, uh, 29 tackles for loss. Um, last year, five and a half sacks, five interceptions. Um, last, year, last year, third on team and 66 tackles last year in 11 games. I mean, just looking at your stats, stats were pretty good. Um, so now, you know, kind of talking about bit Ole Miss, um, how is your game going to translate to Ole Miss? Kind of what are you expecting? Um, what is Ole Miss fans getting with Troy Brown? Uh, for one, um, I would like to say that I'm, I'm just blessed to be here, the best to be in this position, but, uh, they're going to get somebody who's going to lay it all out on the field. Uh, this is my last year so. I can't hold any punches. I can't, I can't hold any tricks in. So, uh, whatever I have and whatever I have to offer, as far as my wisdom um, for being on the field, um, I played over twenty two hundred snaps. Um, so, the the knowledge that I have that I've uh, played, like I played uh, LSU last year, I played Missouri last year, and have fairly good games in both of those games. So. I don't see myself as coming to the SEC and having any drop off, but I do want to show a level of consistency and uh, I want to put the world on notice that like uh, I'm probably the top, I mean, top 10, top five backers that's, that's going to be in the next year's draft. So um, I'm really just, I'm looking forward to, to putting everybody on notice and letting them see that, especially being on this team and being on this stage. Oh, yes, sir. That's a good answer. I like that. So, okay. So, next question I have for you is, and you've already kind of just kind of talked about it, just mentioned it. Now, you did play uh, against LSU last year. I think it was also against Missouri as well. Mm. Did you realize, like, hey, you know, when you announced your transfer, did you know that you just coming to SEC school somewhere? Who are? Uh... I mean, it is a lot bigger, you know, bigger stadium, bigger crowd, bigger mm -hmm. atmosphere tougher competition i mean 
Did he, did he already know you was coming to SEC? Really? I don't. In person, that be something special for you. In my mind, I in the back of my mind, I had it set to go SEC. Um, I kind of wanted to see what all options kind of came from yeah. that. Of course, I, I I had a couple SEC teams uh, reach out other than uh, Ole Miss, but um, I just knew that this this conference, these teams, I mean, these players are potentially like right now the most ready for the league right now. Yeah. So going against that weekend or day in and day out, like even at practice, I'm, I'm seeing these type of guys. So going in day in, day out, week in, week out, and just showing that I can, I can play that, like I can be here and that I'm supposed to be here. And that's, that's just really, I mean, that's, that's all I look forward to. But uh, as far as Missouri, um, when the first play, uh, I believe I'm, Oh no! The first play was a pass play, almost a touchdown. But uh, the first tackle I made, um, it was like for a loss, and it was just kind of—I mean, once that once that play happens, or once that moment happens, it's just like it clicks. And then from there on, like I was I was on the whole game, and I, and I had a I had a very very good game that I, we should have won that game. I ain't, I'm not not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm thinking you had I think it was around ten tackles that game, mm-hmm. if not more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but. Yeah, you definitely had some pretty good games last year for sure, and hey, hoping same thing this year too. Yeah. Okay, so then, uh, of course, you mentioned you know you uh, you transferred. So why why Ole Miss? Why Ole Miss a choice? Why you want to play for Wayne Kiffin? Ooh, well, uh, no disrespect, Lane, but um, he he necessarily wasn't in my decision making process. Um, I know whatever I went to, I wanted to go win. And I know that that's what they did last year, but I also wanted to go to a defense that was full of energy and full of yeah. pieces that that I felt like I could I could move around. And seeing the type of defense that the guys were in last year, it wasn't you know what I mean very ideal or you know what I mean traditional as far as going to the next level and playing in the NFL. But um, the way that they do play is very electrifying and very exciting to see. And and I I, I just wanted to be a part of that. So. Uh, I mean, Ole Miss got Troy Brown. That's, that's, that's how it happened. Yeah. Okay, so who are some of the most energetic guys on the team, especially defense? Uh, some guys up that front, the team up going front. and get you going? Isaiah Iton. That's, that's my okay. dog, man. He's, he's so fun uh, fun to talk to. Uh, big, I'm talking just, just a freak of nature, just looking at him sometimes. And plus, he's right down, like a couple lockers down. So, I'm just – I'm looking at him every day. But yeah. him, KD – uh, both of okay. those guys up front are great. Um, Austin Keys, for him okay. to be a couple years younger than me, man, the, the, the guy is just like a, a Brock Lesnar type dude. Uh, <laughs> and then him, and then Ot uh, Otis Reese. That's the guy. Uh, okay, yeah. he was he was really uh, a guy that you know, I mean he influenced my uh, my decision. Um, I played with his older brother. If, uh, I don't know if you knew that, but. His older brother, Quan that. Jameson, back at uh, Central Michigan, I played with his older brother. He was a safety as well. Okay. Um, and talking to them both over the years and, and being friends with them. Uh, so I knew OT before I came and um, talking to him uh, even before the process. It was just we was just thinking of all these ideas and and, and what we could do together. So that that really uh, motivated me to I mean push push this way, I guess. I got you. Okay, so now let me ask you about the uh, about the offense. Who's the mm. most energetic guys on the offense? Ah, uh, Zach Evans. Zach Evans. Evans. Uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, most exciting people seeing on offense is Zach Evans, by far. Uh, Jukins, the freshman, true freshman. Okay. Yeah. Beast. Uh, real slow to be his age, to be his size. He's gonna be a, a great back. Um. And then uh, Trig, Trig. Okay, he, Michael Trig. Yeah, Michael Trig. Yeah, he he a beast. He <laughs> he he everything you could you could you could read about. So he going against those guys and seeing those yeah seeing those three in in practice and and it's just being early and stuff like that. I'm excited to see what they do in the season. So okay, now who's been some of the uh, biggest surprises to you so far on the team? 
biggest surprise. Some players um, that just kind of really stood out to you and the coaches. Luke Altmeyer. Um, he didn't only take me by surprise as far as his leadership, but uh, his thought process and his mental. Um, knowing that he was a, a, a younger guy and he was a freshman in the Sugar Bowl that I, I came to watch. Um, I know that was his first start, uh, probably his first time ever really touching the field. So he took that and he took that moment and it was very mature of him to uh, play the way he played. But then when I actually got here and I got to listen to him talk and I got to listen to him break the huddle and lead the huddle and, and break the uh, workouts and stuff like that. This guy has a natural knack for leading, and I, and that surprised me. And you know, what I mean, that that gives me like a great hope for the future of the program because I know he will lead it in a great way. Okay, now talking about the court, uh, quarterbacks. Of course, everybody wants to know the quarterback situation, who's winning, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to ask you that because hey, even you don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, what's the biggest difference between Altmeyer and also Dart as well? Uh, from each other, or from what I'm used to. Um, I guess either way. Um, from what I'm used to, I would say both of both of them. The arm strength is is and the arm talent is is great, but I would say some of the decisions they make they make more NFL type decisions. Like they're not only throwing the open pass, but um, you can see that some some passes need to be threaded or some passes need to be given a 50 50 chance and things like that and they're taking those chances and and i see them coming out with i mean it, it's it coming out it comes out their way so seeing that and just and just going against it is like going against a, a league type quarterback because you know tom brady is even if everything is covered tom brady could make the pass to where it's it doesn't seem like it's covered so um going against and, and seeing talent like that is it, just I mean, it makes you realize what what you were at, and then versus where where you at now. So, but um, as far as the difference from each other, um, the arm talent is not far off. The dis- I would say some of the decision making may be um, different, uh, but both of them are very vocal, very controlling, and uh, very comfortable. And what the uh, and what Lane does in the system, so um, I'm wait to I'm excited to see what happens and, and who who leads us out the tunnel. So, oh yeah, hey, all the Ole Miss fans, we all ready too. So, yeah. Okay, so now I have a couple kind of little interesting questions here. Uh, I guess you can call these kind of the fun questions. For sure. Okay, so um, now you actually have a kid. Now this is, this is actually be like a real situation for you. Okay. Uh, but. Who is one teammate you would not wait, not let date your daughter? Who? Uh, oh, we basing this on the guys' looks or their character? Cause it's 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 a lot of guys who are just just off the way he looks. I would not <laughs> like you dating my daughter. Like, uh, well, mo- <laughs> most of them go character wise. Okay, just go on with character wise, and you can't trust them and. The number one guy I cannot let my daughter date is Brandon Mack. That's why my Mac. Can, Brandon you, can Mac. you tell? Not man, tell. cause B Mac, B Mac think he the ladies man. Like he think he's the ladies <laughs> man of the team. Like he think he got every woman. Like ma, uh, and then he a tall, and then he got dreads. So women kind of like that. They have a little yeah fetish for dread heads right now. Man, he just he think he can have them all. He can hit. I could let him date my daughter. <laughs> Okay, I can I can see that. I can see that. So um okay, so now now you've been in Oxford for a pretty short time. Uh mm-hmm. what is your favorite restaurant in Oxford? My favorite restaurant. Uh haven't been to much, but um your favorite so far. My favorite so far. El Charles. I love Mexican food. I actually and- never have been there before. And it was it was pretty yeah it was and then to be inside of it it was more like an elegant type of vibe and stuff like that not just like a, a Mexican shack or or like how they usually are I guess uh, or like bars and stuff but it was more like elegant and and restauranty and and chill and had all the Netflix 
on and stuff. So it was it was yeah. still in there. Yeah, I like I like the Ochoa. Okay, so now uh, who's the funniest teammate? Who's you the funniest? Kind of, you already kind of talked about this a little bit, but okay, I gotta give it. I gotta get. Uh, you had to, if you had to pick one, uh, you can't. You, you, only one. Okay. If you want, if you want to do a top three, go ahead. Okay, on uh, top three, right now, is Clowny. Clowney okay. is yeah. he's Daniel in the top Clowney. three, okay. and it's simply because of his language and his accent. He's from Baltimore, so they they have man, they have this They're funny accent. He's from Baltimore. He, they got the funniest accent, so it's out of him. Mm. Santos. Okay. Okay. Santos is funny just because Santos don't got no filter. Santos will say any and everything whenever or wherever. And it's just like sometimes it's not the right time to say the stuff you're saying. Okay, I got you. You know, and then next it'll probably go. Hmm. Mm. And hey, if you if you want to do just two, that's okay. Sure. Uh, no, I want to give it because this is this is the one. But if I, I was, I, it's Grizz. Grizz, Grizz is funny to me. Okay. Grizz, yeah, Grizz is funny to me. Okay. Uh, let's see, last question I have for you. Now, if you could be in any movie and play any character, what movie would you be in, and what character would you play? Movie would I be in? I want to be in a movie to where I obviously I want to end with a happy ending. Um, okay. Let me, let me think. Okay. You ever watched? Um, uh, I'm gonna say that. Okay. Example, School of Rock. You ever watch School of Rock? Oh, yeah. It's been a while, but yes, I've seen it. I would kind of like to be Ned, but not in the position that it was before school. But okay. he was, yeah, but he, he helped out kids and he ended up, I mean, being like the hero of the movie. But in a way, yeah, I, w- I would want to be Ned from School of Rock. Okay, I can see that. Um, see, I think that's all the questions I have for you, I think. So, hey, really appreciate you doing this. And, uh, hey, best of luck this season. Thanks, Thanks for having me, bro. Okay.